We want to speak with someone who is on the ground right now in the Middle East. That is our own Lara Sertrakian. She is joining us now from Dubai. Lara, what's been the reaction there? Well, Deirdre, there's a tremendous sense of relief and closure, but still some shock. People are figuring out what to make of this. Some say it's fantastic news. Others say it comes too late. A few people congratulating me just for being American. And now support for Osama bin Laden across the Middle East has dropped off in the past decade. And we've seen analysts come out today and say that this plays as a great defeat for Al Qaeda, a great victory for the United States. But it also raises a desire for revenge among the remaining Al Qaeda supporters, jihadi websites sites mourning Osama bin Laden, governments bracing for the risk of reprisals. Also in places like Iraq, uh, governments saying we expect this to happen. Retribution, Al-Qaeda cells making themselves felt. Um, again, this is being taken as a huge symbolic victory, but not as a major operational change for Al-Qaeda or for the greater war on terror. Uh, Jamal Khashoggi, one of the most prominent voices in Saudi Arabia, painting this as kind of a U.S. intelligence flop that it took so long. A decade of deadly hide and seek, a $25 million bounty on bin Laden's head. So, a really diverse perspectives this morning, and also some eyebrows raised on his lifestyle. The fact that he was killed and captured in a million dollar mansion outside of the capital of Pakistan, not in the caves of Tora Bora. The New York Times reports that he'd been living in isolation, no phones, no internet, just a courier between him and the world. Not really a strong operating position. Another, reasons why, another reason why analysts here argue that. Osama bin Laden's death is again more of a symbolic victory than a change in conditions or threats on the ground.